So today we're going to talk about two features in A to J Author, two tools that have been intended to, that are built out to help save you time um, as you're creating A to J guided interviews. So the first one, the first one we'll talk about is the merge tool, and then we'll talk about the map tool. But before we get started, let's talk about the normal workflow for interview creation. So generally, you have a paper form that you want to automate, like the example on the far left here. You highlight or mark up all the fields that need to be answered by the end user. Then you think about or draft a series of questions to fill in those blanks. The question drafting can be visual, like the flowchart in the middle, or it can be more of an outline format if you prefer a more linear approach. Sometimes it's a little of both, and sometimes it's a whole bunch of nothing, um, and you just jump right into the authoring process in the software. I speak from experience here, but I find that um, it's helpful to have some sort of outline and at least a list of the variables that I'm going to need before I jump into the software. Otherwise, it can get very messy and I forget something and you have to go back and you have to try and move around questions. If you have some sort of um, outline in the beginning, it'll help keep you cleaner, the interview process cleaner overall. The great thing about our community of developers and the fact that A to J Author has been around since 2005 is that there are literally thousands of examples of interviews for you to look at when you begin your authoring process. You don't have to start from scratch, even if you're automating a form that's never been automated before. If you're using Law Help Interactive to host your A to J guided interview, their developer portal allows you to download the interview files from about a thousand A to J guided interviews and reuse them in your interview using the merge tool, which I'll talk about in just a second. If you're hosting on a a to j.org, we have access to those interview files. Um, and if there's an interview you want to duplicate or build upon, we can pull that for you and load it into your account. The A to J Author Document Assembly community is very open to sharing and really emphasizes building upon the work of those that have come before us. Now let's talk about how to do that sharing. So the merge tool was released at the end of June this year with the idea that developers can use it to reduce the number of questions that you have to draft, that you can reuse components of interviews like logic, pages, variables, even whole steps from other interviews. And it allows you to recycle the work that you've already done on your own interviews in the past and put them into new ones. So the merge tool allows you to select parts of an interview and merge them into another interview. It does the work of copying and pasting for you without any of the messy um, issues that copy and paste have had in the past. So I'm going to show you a live demo of how the merge tool works. And um, because live demos are always scary, uh, bear with me if there's any technical problems. So I am in my authoring account on a to j author.org. And what I have done is for this demo, I, I know that Illinois Legal Aid Online has really great introductory screens where they explain to the end users um, sort of, I'm not your lawyer, what this is. So I want to copy that in my example here. So what I did earlier today, I went to Law Help Interactive to their developer portal. If you don't have access to the developer portal, portal, you can reach out to Claudia Johnson at Law Help Interactive, Pro Bono Net, and she can give you access to this. I went to all interviews and I found an Aleo interview that I wanted to copy. So um, this, this is assuming that you have access to, to the developer portal. Um, you see an interview that you really like and you go there and you, I, I want to copy, respond to a lawsuit packet, um, their introductory stuff. So what I did is I downloaded the interview files and then I went back to A to J author and I uploaded them and they're in my, um, my list of interviews now. So if I did respond um, to, an in to a lawsuit, you can see here that I loaded it um, earlier today. So now I know I have a new interview, my interview in A to J author land, um, and I want to take some of the Aleo work and merge that into my new interview. So I'm going to go to this new merge interview component section, double click on it to open it. And now I can either start from one of my existing interviews or I can start from a blank interview. So I, in this example, want to start from a blank interview. So I double click on it. I'm going to rename it so I can find it later. So it's going to be called um, New User Webinar Demo November. Okay. And I can see that my blank interview comes with the basic set of variables, the 23 variables that are in all new A to J guided interviews. 
It comes with the four steps, um, step zero through step three, the four pages that are in uh, every interview by default, no pop-ups, no templates. And I know that I want to copy the Aleo interview that was called Respond um, to a Lawsuit. So I go over here to the step two, select the source that I want to pull from, and I select Respond to a Lawsuit. And now it's showing me all of the components of the Aleo Respond to a Lawsuit packet. So it has 111 variables. I can collapse that. It has um, eight steps. It has 14 pop-ups. It has additional media files, and it doesn't have any templates. So I know that I want to take um, the introduction, so I can expand that, and I want to take the welcome, the I'm not your attorney, the two I'm not your attorneys, um, the intro, the pages, and the info needed. So I know that I want to capture these five, these six pages from step zero, introduction, and along with it, Ada J. Author realized that somewhere in one of these six pages um, is a variable. So now you can see one of 111 is selected. So when I selected whichever one of these pages had that variable in it, it triggered the software to also pull any of the dependencies that are needed to complete that page, to, to be part of that page when I copied over with as well. So now I have everything I want to pull into my new interview because none of their qualification stuff or any of the any of the rest of the interview is relevant to my example here. I just know they have really good introductory stuff. So that's all I want to copy from this one. And I have two options for merging. I can either merge the selected or safe merge. So merge selected is going to override any conflicting names that I have in my original interview, the one I've called new user webinar demo from November. So if I have um, a page called page four dash instructions in my uh, initial interview, this new page four instructions is going to override that. If any of the variables are the same, the new stuff that's coming from the merge interview into the old one is going to override it. That seems dangerous to me in general. And so what I'm going to do is safe merge. Safe merge takes any conflicts in variable names or pages names and prepends the ZZZ onto it for safety. So it doesn't override anything. If you have any um, variables that conflict, it will just add the ZZZ to the beginning um, or move them to a different step if the steps clash. So this just makes it safe to merge anything in. And then you can go back and clean up your interview later. So I recommend safe merge in general unless you're absolutely sure you don't have any conflicts. So I'm going to hit safe merge. And just like that, new user webinar demo now has 24 variables. So it included, um, I guess it was def counter was the one variable that was in um, the Aleo interview that I pulled in. And you can see that it, there was a conflict. There already was a page one dash introduction. So then it became, uh, it moved it to step four, ZZZ merged. So it hit a conflict um, and it moved it into a different section. So it didn't have any um, issues with pages overriding each other. So now you can see I have all of the Aleo instructions that are now in step four. I can go back and clean this interview up and move them to the beginning if I want. But then I hit finished, save my interview. And it's saving new user webinar and it'll drop down. So now you new user webinar demo from November. If I open that up, all of the stuff from Aleo here, welcome to Illinois Legal Aid Online's response to a lawsuit. All of that is now in step four. I can go through, clean it up, move it to step zero, delete my introduction stuff, um, and it will be, um, it's now part of my, my interview. So that's how Merge works. If I wanted to go back and add additional stuff from a different interview, say I like the logic from um, one of Texas's interviews, or um, I really like something they've done with explaining um, pop-ups in New York. I can go and take all of those components from different interviews and merge them into the same one. It's not a one-time thing and you're done. You can add different parts of different interviews um, to build out your base or to add to your existing interviews. So that is the merge tool. Any questions on the merge tool before I move on? It's currently the list of interviews you can pull from are only interviews that are in your account and a very small curated list 
of interviews that we've come up with um, that I've pulled off. Um, LHI is good examples. So um, my list of interviews um, is pretty long. So let me just show you the list of sample ones. You can drop to the samples. There are four samples that we think are pretty good uh, examples of interviews that are well done. Um, so the samples are live interviews other people have done that you can pull from. Everything else has to be already in your interviews account. So you do um, have to move it into your account like I showed in the beginning, how I went to um, Law Hub Interactive, downloaded the file, and then moved it into my account. Um, right now, we don't have a repository of shared interviews beyond those four sample A to J guided interviews. A different time saver tool is the A to J map. So the map is a fan favorite for those who are visual learners or who like to see sort of the forest for the trees. The time saver here is that you can skip that outlining process that I talked about uh, in the beginning of the webinar, and you can actually do the outlining in the map tab. So a couple years ago, we really beefed up the map tab and what it could do. Now you can sketch out a rough draft of your interview, including dragging pages to connect them very easily. So this screenshot on the left is an example of that outline I showed earlier, and it looks fairly similar to what um, the current map situation is here on the right. So let me go uh, to the software and show you how it works. Here for the demo of the map, what I'm going to want to do as an example is to automate the sample exercise. So this is the example of the form that I want to automate. It having um, the variables of name, purpose, state, role, phone, zip code, number, checkbox. And then I know I'm going to want at least three additional pages. So I have to make these eight pages to ask each one of these questions and three additional pages. So I need 11 pages total. So if I go to A to J, I go back, let's exit without saving, and I'm going to open up a blank interview and I'm going to go to the map tab. So here by default again four steps are four pages. I know that I'm going to need eight pages total because if you remember there are 11 pages total because I have eight pages that are going to be questions that are going to ask questions to the end user and three with an intro and two exiting options. Um, because at the very end, the last question has a branch of I will or I will not continue working, and I want to have different exiting options based on what the end user says on that. So um, I can go here, and I can either um, just click the Add Page button for each one of the steps. So let's assume I'm going to add um, those two exiting pages at the end, and then I'm going to add four pages in step two. So now I have... Um, I have my four, five, six, and I'm going to add one more introductory page here. So now I have my 11 pages, and you can see that I can, from the map, I can drag and drop and move how pages are connected. So I know that one, two, three, and four are all going to connect to each other. So I'm going to break the connection from one to this one that was up here, and I'm going to redraw it and connect it here. Now I know that this one is going to have to connect up here. I can move them around if I prefer a more visual representation, if I need a little bit more space. I know this is going to go here, this is going to connect here, here, and then this one is going to be my last one with that, um, that two options for exiting. So if they say yes from the first button, it's going to go here. If they say no, I'm going to drag it and put it here. And you can see those a little different here. So right away, I've already sketched out my interview. So it's very similar to um, this outline here. I have my 11 pages that I need to complete this form, and they're displayed here. I can do auto cleanup now if I want A to J to sort of sort them by step to be a little bit neater, and I'm ready to start drafting my questions right away. So I can click on the click on the modal, the picture of the question, and up pops the question design editor. And I can move things around, I can change it, I can add logic, I can do all of my um, labeling, I can add in my pop-ups, um, any multimedia that I have, anything that you would do on the pages tab, this is the same exact question design editor. So you have the ability to, um, to create, to label your buttons and uh, do all that work um, there. So this is an easy way for the map um, to let you flesh out an interview, at least 
the the rough draft of it very quickly. So um, I recommend this one if you're more of a visual learner or if you prefer flowcharts, um, this is a great way to knock that out. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. <laughs> this webinar um, was a little bit shorter just as the whole point was to save time. This one will give you some time back um, into your day. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, raise your hand and I will unmute you. Or you can put your questions in the chat box or the comment box and we can go over those as well. Okay, um, let's see. I think we have a hand raised. Annie, I'm gonna unmute you. You're unmuted. Okay. <clears throat> Does it make sense to uh, look at the interview <clears throat> that you're copying into um, to go ahead and clean up anything that might be a conflict um, before you merge? Yeah, so um, I don't think you need to um, unless you wanted to, to have some sort of like an underlying interview. So when we were designing it, we figured there would be with interviews, you'd have like in your organization, you'd have sort of the introductory screens that you always use in every interview, maybe a set of variables that you always want to use in every variable. And what people have been doing in the past is creating sort of a, a dummy interview and then just starting like making a copy of, of the full dummy interview. Um, and so that was kind of the idea that you, you don't need to have this dummy one. So I don't, I don't think you need to clean it up. I think you can leave the underlying interview and just clean up in the new one if there's any conflicts. But you, you can edit beforehand to prevent any conflicts as well. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Cool. If you have any, um, as you're going out and trying out the merge, or if you realize that it's doing something um, that you didn't expect, or you wish there was something else that it would do, feel free to reach out to me too. We're always interested in taking new feature requests um, and adding and fixing any um, issues with the software. So if at any time through the month you all have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. And thank you for attending the webinar. I'll see you all next month.